Vladimir. Vladimir? Yes, thank you. So, I'll be probably presenting right from within the, well, the actual LibreOffice Impress application, if no one minds. Yeah. And the purpose of this talk is, here's some intro, we'll skip it, is attempting to actually add some, well, more or less naturally feeling uh, physical or at least uh, perceived as physical interactions to the uh, QML scenes. So, for example, everyone sees those nice balls and rectangles when he first sees some QML, but then the obvious impression is that all this sort of lives by itself in some sort of a playground style environment. And those expectations are obviously incorrect because you still have to write all your code in the event handlers, right? Or maybe if you do like and do need to plug in some sort of, well, physical engine, you will go for something like Bullet or Box2D or something as heavy. So it's sort of, of almost a joke and an attempt to create something which naturally fits the QML environment uh, is quite easy to use and uh, is quite compact. So let's see how it actually ends up. And I had about, well, one full work week uh, devoted to it, while also having a flu, which is probably an excuse for not <laughs> achieving all of what I actually initially intended to do. So this is in concept quite simple. Uh, we use bodies. The bodies are basically balls. This is all 2D, of course. Then forces are applied. For example, the simplest example of a force would be gravity. It's just an acceleration vector, which is purely vertical and depends on body's mass. But you can actually trivially add forces dependent on body's position or velocity. And for example, add something like drag or dissipative forces, uh, which actually reduce the body's energy as it uh, goes bumping f uh, through whatever it actually bumps into in this scene. And then the final idea is to have something like a constraint responsible effectively for changing body's velocity as it uh, actually gets in touch with this constraint item. For example, if you have a slope of some sort or a level or a wall and you have your body moving and actually bumping or being about to bump into this thing, then you actually calculate the probable well, velocity at the moment of actual bump and maybe after and maybe change the speeds. And if you decide, for example, that it should slide and you change the speed so that it's parallel to the surface. So that's the basic idea. So let's look how it works in practice. And you can be actually pretty simple with your math here and actually cut some corners. For example, <laughs> you can simply flip the vector for something which bumps, for example, a wall. So if you do your calculations f fairly often, it will not be even noticed. To achieve this, we will need something which actually draws stuff on screen probably. And as QML is declarative, <laughs> still the most basic items like rectangles are not sufficient to have, well, things like springs or normally looking circles or lines on screen, right? But we, we've got that canvas item, which does the imperative drawing for us. And the idea, the, the trivial idea is to have a set of very basic items, which, and let me show this, actually, here they are. For example, one second, if you see this, for example, a ball. Okay, this is plain old QML, but here is something which is different. For example, this. So this is a simple Qt object or Qt object on the C++ side. That is, it knows by default of something named toy canvas as the whole module is called toys and uses this canvas to draw itself. So the idea is that within your scene, you have a series uh, or a set of those plain, simple, and trivial key objects, which 
notify the standard canvas item in the moments when some drawing actually needs to happen, and then the canvas actually does the drawing. It happens like this. Mm -hmm. Not this one. Excuse me. Ah, sorry. Wrong button. Okay, for example, here. Here we drag something, we draw lines, and it's all, well, it all looks like standard QML. For example, here we have those marker items for the draggable rects, and the line items, which are fairly simple, and again, inherited from that item we just saw for the primitive. So the painting is trivial again, and the benefit is that with this, you can still be purely declarative and sort of within the spirit of QML while doing imperative drawing on the background. So here's another example. This time some forces or, well, general vectors get projected on one on another. It works as well. And one of the constraints I sort of imposed on myself as I wasn't, wasn't having enough time to go for the better practices was just not having any automated, automated tests and basically testing everything visually. So this is one of my tests. It works. You can also have something like, well, good old circles, intersected or not. And these are again items painted by the standard canvas. So this is all trivial. Now let's go back to the presentation. Okay. So the calculations are trivial. We basically iterate through all the bodies we have in the scene. And then the forces are applied. If some constraints are actually applicable, uh, they govern the behavior of the bodies. If not, the cumulative uh, forces do it. Let's look at how it behaves. So we have two minutes. Firstly, this is the most trivial example. So a ball falls to something and bounces. We can actually, uh, give me a second. We can actually continue here. And it will be bouncing with much smaller amplitude. This is trivial. And that's the, well, that's the micro example of what is actually intended. A playground style application. Now, the next one of three, and I hope I will make it, make it in time. Another ball and now some actual constraints. So let's see how it goes. So it's very trivial. And sorry, the bumps are now only for the centers of the ball. So let's imagine only the axis <laughs> get actually, well, contacted by the barriers. I do have the code for the proper circle to line in intersection, as you see, but I haven't yet incorporated it. And so it can actually get quite funny with the setups like this. I once left it for like 15 minutes doing my stuff and it basically was jumping and jumping around and going here and there. And so, so that's the idea. And the last one now, and I'm almost out of time. Okay, one minute. <laughs> Sorry, that's the wrong one. Okay, here. We can have bungee cords. So that's a spring item. And here we go. Let's make it more interesting. Pam, pam, pam. And as you see, this is. And as I will probably show you in the last 10 seconds, this is purely declarative. So we have uh, a spring item for the physics and a toy item for the visuals, which uses canvas and the actual <laughs> width of the cord in projection to the screen space, right? It is determined by the, oh, sorry. Uh, that was actually done in the last hour prior to presentation, sorry. No interactivity here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> ah. Okay, let me show you the code. Flower, ball, ball, I don't see it. Ah, bungee and bungee. 
the indexing hasn't yet been uh, hasn't yet run in creator let me see manager 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 here it is so that's the code here we have width and then once you actually do this you get some weird effects when it reaches zero or maybe not ah i made the wrong line so be careful with the thank you okay Thank you, Vladimir, for sharing.